I'm joined here today with author Terry Shepard, and I guess for people who may not know too much about you, I'll get you just to go into your background. So for most of my life, I was a corporate guy, Jasmine. I worked in the corporate world in telecommunications for 40 years, and it wasn't until we came back to Florida to live closer to our grandkids that I had this kind of crisis of conscience. You know, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And thank goodness from where I shrink, she said, you don't need to worry about making big bucks anymore. What would you love to do? And I sat down and talked with my son-in-law, who had changed his career from a lawyer to being a graphic designer. And we hammered out this notion of trying to write fiction. So my wife and I decided we'll spend a year doing that and see how it works. And that's when I invented Jessica Ramirez. Jess is my protagonist in the um, Chasing series, Chasing Vega, and the new one, Chasing the Captain. She's based on a real-life Latina cop in Lansing, Michigan, someone I've known for a quarter century and one of the first minorities, double minorities, in her police force. So as you can imagine, she had a lot of challenges in what is still primarily a male-dominated culture. And she would tell me about these horrible stories that had unhappy endings. And I said, why don't I write one that has a happy ending for you? And that's how Jessica Ramirez came to be. And you released the newest novel in the Jessica Ramirez series, Chasing the Captain, not too long ago. So what can readers expect in this book? Chasing the Captain is the sequel to Chasing Vega, but you can read it as a standalone. I give enough backstory to talk about how Jess gets where she is. And in Chasing Vega, she was chasing a serial killer who liked to dispatch her victims by drugging them and throwing them into the Colorado River off of the rim of the Grand Canyon. Well, Jess beat her, but her boss got away. And so in Chasing the Captain, she comes face to face with a former Russian KBG, KGB agent who has designs on tipping the balance of power in the world in a very, very bad way. And Jess, once again, is a fish out of water. Miles from Paloma, Illinois, her fictional hometown, She's stuck in London and then in Moscow trying to get this bad guy. And that's when all the excitement happens. Now, the other book in the Jessica Ramirez series has been translated into different languages and, and brought into the audiobook form. So what does that mean to you to see that your book is able to reach a broader audience? What I really wanted to do was make Chasing Vega and Chasing the Captain available to a Latino audience. I felt very strongly that my ensemble cast needed to be very diverse. So Jess, of course, is a Latina cop. Her sidekick, Alexandra Clark, is LGBTQ. In Vega, my medical examiner is on the autism spectrum. My FBI guys are African-American. So it really is a rainbow of characters. And so what I wanted to do is make sure that it was accessible in the language. So I hired a really good translator, and I said to her, just stick with the plot points, but make the story your own. Reimagine it for a Latino culture so we can connect with that audience. And the response has been just fantastic for that. Chasing Vega is available in Spanish, and um, I'm expecting the translation for Chasing the Captain to come in the next four days. So I'm really excited to read that. Now, you also run a podcast. So what first inspired you to start this podcast? Was it just your background in radio? You know, it's, it's interesting, Jasmine, because what I wanted to do was I wanted to learn from the best. So in your world, it's so cool because you get to talk to anybody that you want. So whatever your interest happens to be, if there's somebody that you want to talk to, you've got the credentials to do it. So I started uh, working for Authors on the Air and hosting the Authors on the Air podcast, now the Authors on the Air vodcast, primarily as a way to get authors that I wanted to talk to to spend time with me. And it's worked out to be a real win-win because the shows have become very popular. I get between four and 6,000 views per program now. I do them a little bit differently. I do it kind of as a uh, more of a feature or a mini documentary than an interview. So it really is a deep dive into who the person is. I get their friends to talk. And it's fascinating for me because before and after the show, I get quality time with them. And to a person, every author that I've interviewed, and I'm coming up on 60 shows now, has become a friend. And I've learned something from each one of them. I think, Jasmine, that we were put on this earth with a purpose. And our purpose, our universal purpose, is to leave the world in a better place than we found it. And that's what I'm trying to do with my life and my work, is everybody that I connect with, I always try and find some way to add value to their lives, to alleviate a little suffering, to maybe open a door for them so that they can meet their potential in their own way. And in radio and in everything that I've done, even in the leadership role in cor the corporate world, I was bound and determined to help 
raise the bar and help people achieve their dreams. And that's my real joy. When I get an email from a young Latina who is in high school and has read Jess and wants to grow up to be like her, that makes my day. When I hear from somebody on the autism spectrum that they've never ever considered being a doctor, let alone a medical examiner, but now they think they can, that makes my year. And if anyone is looking to listen to the podcast or purchase any of your books, where should they go? Everything starts at terryshepherd.com. That's my central pivot for all of the things that I'm doing. There are links to everything on my Facebook and Instagram, Pinterest, TikTok. Everything is there. All the connections. Go check it out. And I'd love to make a connection with your, with your viewers.